Why hello there, Anxious Cynic back again with our beginner's guide to Minimator. And just like I said in the last part, in this video we're going to focus on how to make your own custom walk cycle from scratch. So as you can see here, we've got Steve in his basic base pose here. And I'm just going to move up, let's say, 10 keyframes and this is where we're going to kind of begin the walk cycle so that way he can begin from a neutral stance. So basically the way you typically would do a walk cycle is a pose to pose style animation. So that's how we're going to go with this today and we're just going to kind of make probably it's going to probably going to be a little bit rough. It may not be a perfect walk cycle, but it should give you guys the basic idea of how to start making your own walk cycles and uh, maybe you can get more advanced from there. So the first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and create the first pose, which is basically going to be one leg forward, one leg back, same with the arms, etc. So let's just go ahead and do the arms for some reason. I don't know why. And we can just do like this. Maybe we we'll come like this. There's a number of different like theories and like things that you should learn about animation and how the stuff goes and like what the technical terms and all that stuff is for it. But this is Minimator. This is Minecraft. We're going to have some fun and I'm just going to kind of show you the basic idea. All right. So, uh, don't get too angry. All right, so uh, let's go ahead. We're just gonna go ahead and try to use some even numbers here to keep up with our walk cycle. So I'm just gonna make that rotate 30 degrees. And then this one's gonna come up, I don't know, let's say about negative 40, something like so. And then there's like your kind of basic pose there for you know, a walking animation. We're gonna go ahead and save. And there's a few other things that we can do here. We can actually take the body, we can lean them forward a little bit, like maybe He's kind of walking a little bit faster or something like that. Let's just have that go about seven and we can have him rotate. So if you're kind of walking, you might be rotating a little bit like this. So let's just say like maybe three on that axis and we can have him bend a little bit if we wanted to. Maybe he's uh, bending about three degrees there. And then we can come up and mess with the head, kind of bring the head up a little bit, maybe about seven, something like that. And then we can have the head kind of adjust for the amount of uh, churn that we have on the body there and kind of rotate that a little bit as well. So that's going to be pretty much the entirety of our first pose. You could actually, you know, bring this, you know, bend his arms a little bit, whatever you want to do. It's, it's really up to you. There's a number of different ways to make a walk cycle because it really depends on the attitude and the mood and the way your character is supposed to be moving and, uh, you know, the purpose that he has in his walk and all that kind of stuff. All right, so basically we just want to take this pose and reverse it. So first thing we're going to do is the arms and the legs because they're the easiest. So I'm going to click on the left leg there. I'm going to hit Control C to copy and then I'm going to select the right leg timeline. I'm going to hit Control V to paste. And for now, I'm just going to leave those 15 frames apart. And we're going to do the same here. Control copy or Control C, Control V. And then now we've rotated those keyframes for each leg just like so, just that easy. So now we're just gonna do the same thing for the arms. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on the left arm. We're gonna hit Control C to copy. Select the right arm, Control V to paste. Select the right arm, Control C to copy, and Control V to paste. So now we should get that motion there. You can kind of see that the walk is beginning to take shape a little bit. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and copy the body and the head since they both they don't have like a, a reverse that we can copy. So we're just going to go ahead and copy both of those and then reverse it kind of manually. So I'm going to click on the body here. So you can see here that we've got this at seven and three. So basically the only thing we need to reverse is the Z rotation because he's his body's moving differently now. So we're just going to make this negative three just like that. And that's going to make that churn. And uh, we could adjust like, you know, the tilt of his body and the bend and all that stuff. But for now, we're just going to leave that B. So we're going to come over here to the head. And uh, basically the same thing here. We just want to make this positive two. Just get rid of the negative there. And then we have basically the reverse of those things right there. And we're just going to hit save by control S. And uh, that's pretty much, I mean, if you wanted to make a really basic walk cycle, you could leave it at that and just repeat those keyframes over and over stuff like that but typically you want there to be like a, a middle frame which you call a passing pose so what i'm going to do is actually drag one of these out just a bit something like that so we can get kind of an even number here we want this keyframe to go directly in the center that's not where i want it but uh something like that and basically we want the leg that's coming forward which is going to be the right leg in this instance so i'm going to click on that right there for the right leg and it's on its way forward right so if we go like this, 
is coming forward. So about the halfway point between those two, we're just gonna go ahead and set another keyframe and we're just gonna bend this leg. Let's just say 65 degrees, something like that. And if we really wanted to, we could probably go ahead and like make this leg straight at this point. So that way it's all the way straight up and down and this one's coming up. So what you'll get is that motion right there. Just like so. And then we want to do similarly for the arms maybe. It really depends on how you want it to look. You could add some more bend to the arm if you wanted to. Uh, typically I think they're okay, but you would probably want to add a keyframe transition. So let's just say for the arms here, I'm going to go ahead and select these two and we're just going to leave those, I guess it saved our keyframes from previous tutorials. So we'll just leave that as B and, uh, on the legs, we want to keep those linear. So just make sure that's how that goes. All right. So that's basically what you got there is that little bit right there but you may want to add certain things like say for instance to the body at this point you know you can see he's at zero there we could kind of straighten him up a little bit if we wanted to so when he takes a step his body kind of straightens out something like that you can kind of bring up this just a tad maybe five there and do just like that and every time he takes a step his body kind of comes up and stuff and then we might would want to bring his head down to negative five, kind of keep that in sync with the body, maybe a little bit more. Negative four, who knows? You can do whatever you want. You know, you can make it however you want it to look, just as long as it doesn't look too wonky. There we go, not too terrible. All right, so now that we've got these keyframes here, we want to continue this walk cycle, be able to kind of copy paste these keyframes. And uh, basically the way we're gonna do that is by reversing these now. So we've got this one here. So we're just gonna click on Control C, double click on that one, and then bring it down for the left leg, Control V, and just try to make sure that they're evenly spaced just like the previous ones. And then Control C here, and Control V, just like so. And then since we're actually coming back to this pose, we're just gonna copy this keyframes, this little line of keyframes here, Control C, Control V, and just try to make sure that you're staying within the same, uh, you know, amount of keyframes to keep everything evenly spaced out. Something like that. We actually are working with about 11 keyframes here, I think, or no, 16 keyframes. Uh, you may want it to be a little bit faster than that. I don't know. Really depends on how you want your walk to look. And what we're going to do also is copy this one. We're going to hit control C and then control V. So if I go ahead and collect this little thing right here, collect all of our keyframes into a little thing there, and we're just going to select away and hit play. There you go, man. Dang old walk cycle for Steve. And uh, yeah, that's not too terrible, I would say. That's a pretty good basic little walk cycle to start out with. All this grass is getting in my way, man. Anyway, so... Uh, Got a little hop in his step and Steve's moving along, man. Everything is going so well. And uh, another thing we could do, let's go ahead and stop this. This leg that's coming forward doesn't really seem to be kind of coming forward quite enough in my opinion. So what we could do is actually, let me go ahead and right click on that to get that to go away. And uh, what we could do is get this to kind of rotate a bit more than it actually is. Maybe this passing pose should be a little bit further up. Let's just say negative 18, and then we'll do the same here. We'll go negative 18. You don't have to use these round numbers. It's going to make it a very, you know, rigid cyclical walk cycle. You could do variations to kind of give some more life to the motion and stuff, but I'm kind of OCD, so I use those even numbers as much as I can. Anyway, so uh, let's go ahead and watch that. Doesn't look too bad. I might would actually want that to come up a little bit even more. So uh, let's try 25. Basically just trying to even out the feet maybe. I don't know. We're just experimenting right now. So uh, when one is stepping down, the other one's passing pretty well at that point. It really depends on how you want it to look. That doesn't look too bad. In a way, I think I would probably prefer the initial way or something closer to the original way we had it. But that's another thing you can do that kind of accentuates the walk and kind of gives you a different look than just the default, like legs swinging in their, you know, linear patterns. 
So I'm going to go ahead and disable the repeat feature. And now the question is like, how do we get this to repeat the way we want to? So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and just delete this just to make it a little bit simpler. So basically this little set of keyframes here contains all the information of our walk cycle. So for one thing, we may want to save this. So what we could do is like highlight these keyframes like so, and we could go over here to the little save icon and export the selected keyframes. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then this dialog box comes up and I've navigated to my Minimator install folder that we set up in the first part. And I'm just going to go ahead and create a new folder. I'm going to call this one uh, saved animations, just like so hit enter. And I'm going to go ahead and go into this and I'm going to call this one uh, basic walk cycle. And then you'll see here it says minimator keyframes dot mi frames. And that's what we want because that's what is by default. And we're going to hit save. And then now we've saved these keyframes that we can use later. And we'll go ahead and give an example of that in a moment. But let's say we want to make this a walk. So what do we do? We're just going to go ahead and highlight all of these keyframes. We're going to hit control C to copy, control V to paste. And we'll just keep doing that as much as we want. And then like, let's say we're going to have a really long walk cycle. We don't want to keep doing this over and over. So now that I've got several lined up, I'm just going to go ahead and select all of those. Control C, Control V. And then now you have like a really long walk cycle there. So hopefully if we did that right, we're going to go back here and watch it. And there's Steve's walk, man. Not a walkman, but his walk, man. And uh, there you go, man. He's walking. And basically the same thing that we talked about in the previous tutorial with the automatic keyframes would work here as well. We're just going to set another keyframe and we're just going to tell them go on over here, something like that. And we hit play and he's walking. Obviously that's a bit too slow. Again, you have to adjust these sometimes. So you don't get lucky every time. You don't to have Steve walking around, man. He's doing his own thing. Not a very good walk cycle, but you know, it is what it is. Hopefully you guys get the idea there. So let's say you want to reuse one of those keyframe saves that you did. We want to use this walk cycle in a new project or say for another character or something. Technically within this project, we can copy these keyframes since we still have them copied. I'm going to go ahead and bring in another character. Let's just say uh, a zombie just for, you know, safety sake <laughs> and uh, Let's go ahead and turn on the grid there and this will actually snap these to a certain grid size so that makes it a little bit easier to move around but it also causes this because this is one pixel down so i'm just going to bring them down to 95 and that will line up with the path because each square is actually a pixel and thus a point on the uh the position markers there so with the zombie selected i'm going to come down here and i'm going to expand all of the stuff you may not really have to do that but just make sure he's selected and we're going to hit control V to paste. And then there you go, man. Let's come on. Just dang it. All right. And then there's the zombie with the same walk as Steve. All right. So you can easily just copy paste walk cycles in between characters. No big deal. But let's say you're in a whole other project and we have a skeleton or something like that. We're just going to go ahead and have the skeleton come over. Now, the skeleton's body doesn't bend, at least as of now in uh, Minimator. So what we're going to do is, hang on, gonna, we got to position this guy. Everybody's spawning in at random places. Let me uh, drag him back over here, just like so. And uh, his body doesn't bend, like the back part, as you may have seen, that we've got that bending. Well, he doesn't have the option because he's a skeleton. For some reason, they don't bend. So uh, what we can do with the skeleton root selected, just like usual, you always typically are going to be selecting the root of the character. We can come up here to this button right here, import an asset, click on that. And you'll see it actually opened up in our saved animations because that was the last folder that we were in in Minimator. If that's not the case for you, then just navigate to wherever you saved your keyframes. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click open. And then you'll see there that our keyframes just popped into the skeleton and he begins doing the walk as well. And then you can just copy those keyframes and extend it out to make a full blown walk cycle for your skeleton and stuff. So there it is, guys. That is probably the derpiest looking scene you've ever seen in your life, but there it is. That is how to make a custom walk cycle. That's how to save your keyframes and bring them into other characters and into entirely new projects. So hopefully that was helpful to you guys. Hope you learned something. At least gives you a little platform to start off with. So yeah, that's going to be it for me, guys. Hope you learned something. Hope it was helpful. If you like this video, feel free to hit that like button. Comment and subscribe to become a citizen today. Share it with your friends, or your family, and your pets. And I will see you guys in the next video.